Hey, welcome back to How to Barbecue Right. I'm Malcolm Reed. I'm on location today at my buddy Mark Williams' place here at Swine Life Headquarters, and we've got something extraordinary for y'all. Mark, I brought a giant prime prime rib. This is Wagyu from Australia, A9 grade. I got it from my buddy Kevin down at the butcher shop, and I don't normally spend this kind of money <laughs> to cook a prime rib, but it's one time a year. We got the holidays coming up, and we're gonna share it today. How's that sound, man? Man, I cannot wait. I am super stoked for this. That is an awesome cut of meat. And don't get mad at me if it's bloody, because that's the way we <laughs> like to eat it. It's gonna be bad to the bone. Let's get to cooking, y'all. This rib loin weighs 12 and 3 quarter pounds. That ought to be enough for both of us, right? Yeah, we ought to be able to get six pounds a piece. <laughs> we're gonna bust it out. I don't know how much age it's had on it. I'm sure Kevin gets them, holds them a little bit, but I want you to look at this, dude. It's got a little moisture in there. Now, this thing is marble to the bone. That's what's so special about Wagyu beef. And I know not everybody's gonna cook one of these for the holidays, but if you ever get the chance, I highly suggest it. Gotta try it. But look at that meat right there. That looks beautiful. We're gonna trim it up just a little bit. I wanna take some of this excess fat off, but I'm not getting crazy with it. We're just gonna go down it. If you like to keep them trimmings, that renders down and makes some awesome tallow. But you can see the marbling in the meat, even at this stage. I mean, it's just, it looks like beautiful brisket point all the way down that loin. You know it's gonna have some flavor to it. It's gonna be tender, not aggressive trim at all. Check the spinalis out on this dude, Mark. It's marbled through and through. The eye of the ribeye is marbled through and through. That's just a grade of beef that you don't see every no. day, buddy. I mean, that's all I'm gonna take off. If you look there, I didn't take off a whole lot. That's probably not even a half pound. So we've still got, you know, 12 pounds a of delicious. meat right here. All right, Mark, you got some butcher twine? Let's tie this dude up. Pick man. it up real quick. We're gonna lay it underneath it. All right, that's cool. Lay them all down, that way we don't have to do it one time. You don't want no kind of fancy knot for this fancy no, cut, man. do you? That's no, nothing fancy here. Because we tag team it, I'll come behind you and cut the string. How about that? <laughs> Just don't cut me. <laughs> Check out that fat, man. That stuff's already wanting to render. Like, it's sticking to the gloves. You know what's oh, gonna render oh, right yeah. there. And it's cool outside. Yeah. Wait till we get it on some heat. Turn it into some meat butter. Now, Mark, I'm gonna use a little Worcestershire binder on the outside of this prime rib. I like the Worcestershire because it has great flavor, but it also it gives that uh, outside a little bit darker color too. All right, Mark, now it's time for that first seasoning. It's a good one. You line this one up. What do we got today? A little prime beef. I'm gonna hit it with a good dose of this prime beef. Hey, give it to this it. Is, this is a season that y'all come out with not too long ago that is just made for anything beef. Got that mushroom powder, a little onion, a little can garlic. You, can you tilt it for me a little bit? Get the ends. There we go. Man, that dude already smells good. And to give us a little texture, I brought my TX. Now, y'all know this is that coarse ground pepper, coarse ground salt, a little bit of herb in it. Made for beef, made for prime rib especially. That salt and pepper doesn't really dissolve. It kind of keeps that crust action going. I love the way it tastes on the outside. This is gonna be the upside. And you know what I like to do here? Take a little bit of rosemary and we're gonna work it in underneath our knots just to give it, you know, a little fancy look. You don't have to do this part, but it does make it look good. So we're firing up the Outlaw Patio Smoker today. Mark, I started with some Royal Oak Charcoal Briquettes, couple tumbleweeds underneath. Let those coals get good and hot. Then you're adding a stick of hickory wood today. Hickory wood. And we'll add one about every 45 minutes to an hour as it needs it throughout that cook. We're gonna be looking to cook at 275. As soon as that smoker comes up to temperature, we're gonna put the prime rib on. But I wanna show you these mushrooms that we're gonna do. So I've got a stick of butter going down here. And this is like, my take on a Como Steakhouse mushroom. It's one of my favorite steakhouses around. They just use white button mushrooms. It's all about the sauce they cook down in. You gotta have some Worcestershire sauce. For this one, I take that carburetor out. Get that out. carburetor out of the yeah. way. And I'm not measuring it, but if I had to guess, you know, about eight ounces. Then you gotta have some red wine. Use your favorite red wine, whatever you got. This is some Kendall Jackson. About a cup of red wine, or a little more if you like it. Now make sure that red wine's good. Got a little bit of shallot going down, minced up nice, a little bit of garlic. Now as this cooks down, we're gonna stir it up. We're also gonna use this liquid to base that prime rib with once we get a little crust action going on the outside. I wanna season it up. I'm grabbing some of your prime beef, man. Go for it. I'm gonna add about a cup of beef broth. Y'all get the idea. We got about a cup and a half of liquid, stick of butter, all this other good stuff. I'm also gonna throw a little bit of rosemary in here. We'll just kind of strip it off. I'm not worried about chopping it. I just want some essence of. So once that smoker gets up to temp, we're putting it all on. All right, the outlaws come up to 275. It's time to get this beautiful prime rib on. We're gonna put the spinalis 
toward the fire since it's got a little bit more fat content. We'll put the mushrooms right in front of it. Use that pan of mushrooms as a shield so we really can baby this prime rib. Get all that fat good and rendered. All right, we've been rolling for about 45 minutes on our prime, prime rib. Man, it is looking good. You can see we got that crust going on the outside of it. TX rub, the prime beef, the mushrooms starting to get real happy in this concoction we got them in. I'm gonna use the liquid from inside the mushrooms, the Worcestershire, the red wine, the beef broth to add just a little moisture to the top of the prime rib. And I'm not really touching the meat. I'm just kind of using the brush to add, just to kind of baste it a little bit. Letting those juices run down it, picking up a little bit of that garlic, a little bit of that shallot that's in there. And Mark, if you don't mind, get a probe ready because we want to start watching the internal temperature on this Wagyu. We don't want it to go much more than 120 today. That's where I want to eat it. You know, if you want to cook it to medium, go ahead, medium rare, whatever you like. For us, we're keeping it on the rare side. We're gonna go ahead and get this probe put in here. Going dead center of this loin, shooting for that good rare finish. Be one heck of a Wagyu prime rib. All right, we're two hours in. I'm coming back to my mushrooms, giving them a good stir. And then we're gonna do the same thing. Just keep basting this beautiful prime rib. I mean, the color is fantastic. It's getting that crust on the outside. We're just keeping a little moisture on it. Starting to darken up a little around the edge. That's okay. That's what I want to see. We're going to keep the lid closed now. Just let it keep rocking. We've done hit about 90 degrees internal. Got about 30 more degrees to go. Check it out. We have hit. This done hit 121, man. We're going to get past my rareness. But no, this is what we want it to be, man. We've got this beautiful color on the outside of this Wago rib loin. We got our mushrooms cooked down. We got all that awesome sauce in there on them. It's time to get this prime rib off. I want to give it a last little baste just to get us some extra moisture in here of the mushroom juice. All right, Mark, we have let this Wagyu prime rib sit as long as we can take it. It's been about a half hour. I poured the juice up that was in the pan in a little bowl, so we got us some dipping action. Whipped up a horseradish creamy sauce, mayo, creamy horseradish, regular horseradish, little hot sauce. Put the mushrooms in a bowl, we're ready to eat those, but the star of the show, man, you gonna do the honors for me? I'm kind of nervous about cutting oh, this, oh, man. Oh, man. This is going to be, I'm expecting this to be some of the best beef that I've ever ate in my life. Thanks, Kevin. We ain't even tried it yet, and I'm just saying thanks. Man, this, <laughs> this is most like most expensive beef I've ever cut. Going right down the middle? Yeah, let's cut it in half, see how it did. We still got it tied up, still Ooh. got the rosemary on top. Took it to 120 degrees internal. Oh, here's the moment of truth. No, I'm not nervous. I'm nervous. <laughs> And look at that. Oh man, it's beautiful pink. Soft. All the way on the inside. Look at the juices on it. Oh man. Can you take some of that string off? Yep. Get that rosemary out of the way? I'm excited. Oh my God. The way, it, the, the way the juice is just falling out of it when you slice it. Check that out. This knife is falling through it. Like That's it, just a thing of beauty. It is so soft. Oh, if I'm at the finest steakhouse and they're serving me prime rib like this, Mark, my, my, my tongue's just whooping my head. Ooh, that's enough. Can we, can we try it, Mark? Can Man, we try it? try it. We gotta go back in here and get one all of right. these. Oh, look at the way this juice. Look at all the juice in there. The spinalis. The Don't fat. even need a knife. Oh, man. You, want, you, you even want to dip it? Not dip right it now. Dip it in the resting juice? Cheers oh. to a great year. Heck of a beef. It's been fun and how to barbecue right this year. I wish y'all were here to try that. I've never in my life had texture like that on a prime rib. That is the softest beef I've ever tried. Australian Wagyu A9. I know how good the briskets are from the butcher shop. That's once in a lifetime meat. That is, that's like filet texture. Like gotta, beef loin texture, like tenderloin. I got a time out. Unbelievable, unbelievable. How'd a mushroom do? I ain't even got to that. I ain't worried about a mushroom right now. I ain't now. worried about the mushroom. I gotta try the mushroom, man. That makes it. Hands down, that's taking prime rib to an 11 right there. Prime, prime rib, A9 Wagyu from the butcher shop. Cooked, what, two hours, 45 minutes, 275 on an outlaw stick burner, hickory wood, seasoned it with Mark's prime beef, a little bit of TX, basted it with those mushroom juices that were cooking down right beside it. It don't get any better now, that's, folks. It's, that's legit. That is that something is, like- That is legit, yeah. They it, it don't do it justice. No. The camera is not gonna do this one justice. Malcolm, I wanna tell you thank you. 
this right here is awesome. This was worth every bit of crap you put me through this year. <laughs> it was definitely worth it. I appreciate it. Hey, thanks to Kevin. If y'all want something truly outstanding, you want to impress your friends and family, give him a shout down at the butcher shop. He'll ship you one of these Wagyu prime ribs. Guarantee you it's the best beef you've ever ate. Subscribe to the channel if y'all haven't already. We'll be back next year doing a whole bunch more of this delicious stuff. Y'all can check out Market. Swine like BBQ. Give him a subscribe too. We'll see y'all next time. I'm gonna need a nap after this one, Mark. You want me to go back to work, are you? We're <laughs> done for the day, ain't we?